What's up guys, Mike here. And today we're gonna teach you how to set up your Elgato cam link. So you can turn any camera that has an HDMI out into a webcam. Let's get to it. All right, so you've purchased a, a cam link. You're ready to turn your camera into a webcam, whether you're using this to record videos through OBS or as a virtual cam for conference calls or Zoom meetings, or you're just looking to use your PC as a recording source for just any camera that has an HDMI out. So the very first thing you need to do is download the Elgato software. It's very simple. You just go to elgato.com. You go to the download section down to where you select your cam link device and you start the install process. Once you get it all installed, you can now plug in your cam link into your USB port and connect your HDMI into the HDMI port of the cam link. And you are all set. Now you power your camera on and you make sure that your camera has a clean HDMI out. Now, a quick way to make sure that your camera is all good to go, Elgato has an awesome section of their website where they sort different camera types by brand and make and model. This is a very quick and easy way to see if your camera can do clean HDMI out. So the simplest way to explain what clean HDMI out is, it removes all the information around the frame that you see in your viewfinder on your camera. The stuff that lets you see your audio levels, your battery, your f-stop, your ISO, all that stuff. Clean HDMI means you're gonna send none of that out of the HDMI. Because if you don't have clean HDMI, all of that is still gonna get transmitted to the cam link and into your streaming software or your virtual camera. So make sure your camera is good to go. Again, Elgato's got a great resource for that for you to double check. Most modern cameras have clean HDMI out, but there are a few that do not. So it's always good just to double check. All right, so now that you've got your software installed, you've checked and your camera is good to go with clean HDMI out and you've set it to have clean HDMI out, you're now ready to bring your camera into OBS using your cam link. So you get it plugged in. Now the next thing you gotta do is add a video capture source. It's very simple. You just do the plus sign, video capture source, and then add new. You can label this cam link, label it cam link. That way you don't get it lost with your other video sources. It's always good just to label it, just to keep things easy to figure out when you start adding scenes and you know getting a little crazy with your setup. The next thing you'll see are your different options for your device. Now, you can always leave everything to def default or device default which is fine, but it's always good to go ahead and just define what you want these fields to be. Typically, it's good to go ahead and set these at 1920 by 1080 if you're working in a 1080p resolution uh, canvas. And then also to set your frame rate to what your OBS is already set to. If you're running a 1080p 60 or you're just running 60 FPS, go ahead and select 60 FPS. If you're doing a 30 FPS stream or 30 FPS style recording, go ahead and select 30. This is all dependent on what your machine is able to do and what everything else is going to be set at as well. It's good to just keep every frame rate the same. So if you're using a capture card and your gameplay is 60 FPS, go ahead and make your camera 60 FPS as well. It'll just look a lot better and it's just a little bit less taxing on your machine. As far as color space goes, leave it at default or partial. The reason being, when you go full, you'll notice that it starts to get a little bit washed out or flat or neutral. If you're familiar with cameras or filmmaking, this is OBS's way of creating a neutral picture profile because it's expecting you to use something like a LUT or a lookup table or a filter. If your camera is set to be neutral and you're wanting to add a LUT to OBS, you could do that, it's very easy. If you're not wanting to do that and just to use what's already in your camera and what already, how it looks and you're happy with how that visual looks, go ahead and select partial. It'll select a more normal broadcast range of colors. It'll look a lot more normal and you don't need to do any extra steps here. But if you're wanting to get more in depth 
on how to utilize LUTs and stuff like that, let me know in the comments below and we can make a video about how to use LUTs in OBS. Let me know. And then there's also an option to add audio from this device to OBS. This comes down to what you're doing and just how you need this camera to function. If you're using a camera that has a microphone input and you need that microphone source to be transmitted to OBS, like let's say you're doing a live event or a concert or something like that, and you need that video source's audio to be picked up in OBS, then yes, go ahead and select audio to be controlled by OBS. But if it's purely just a visual and you're using an external microphone or a microphone going through an audio interface like a GoXLR, go ahead and leave that unchecked. All right, and this next option, you're gonna see color space. Go ahead and select 709. This is a very industry standard color space. Trust me, it's what you want. Go ahead and select 709. All right, that's it. Your camera is now ready to rock in OBS using your Elgato Cam Link. Pretty simple, right? If you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you'd like to see more content about this, about content creation, cameras, audio, and all that good stuff, feel free to subscribe. We do post a video every single week. And if you ever have any questions about stuff like this, I do stream three nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Links to that will be down below. I would love to help you out. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.